Hello everybody, welcome to the Scottish Rugby Podcast brought to you by the Scottish Rugby Blog. I am Cammy Black. Joining me this evening, we've got Craig Manson. Good evening, Craig. Good evening, how are we doing? Ian Hayes with us again. Hello, Ian. Hello, I'm currently messing about with my monitors. I'm, this is, I'm confused now. Are the, monitors is in like screens or monitors. Have you got like you got like the full rock and roll setup where you're getting the oh, yourself played yeah, back man. to you? Uh, yeah, no, uh, not not sound wise, just more uh, visual. No, I'm, I'm double monitored up, but that's it's usually exciting. with my work laptop, and I've right. just plugged a new one in, and now the mouse was moving the wrong way. It was like having inverted mouse. Oh, it's like where the mouse looks like it's going all the way around the back of the computer and through the other side. Yes. Yeah. You need to switch your screens. Right click uh, and yeah, allocate one as one two. I've actually swapped one and two over. I just found that at the very last few bars of the song. But oh I don't <laughs> I don't know if I've uh, verified you know, made it do the identify detecting. I might just unplug the damn thing to be honest. Give me we'll be seconds. fine. Listen, here's yeah. a good this is a good tutorial in uh, using du- dual screens. We we are nothing if not a public service. Um <laughs> they're vital uh, for some circumstances and uh, I, I recommend it if you have the the facilities to do so. I recommend dual monitors. Dual monitors are amazing. It's life changing. You know that it makes me feel like. Do you remember the guy with the headset in Cloud City and Empire Strikes Back? First yeah. time, first time I got dual screens. That's exactly how I felt. Does he just look like Mister Strickland from Back to the Future, or is it the same guy? <laughs> I don't think it is Mister Strickland. You know, I don't think like... it is Mister Strickland, is it? I mean, because it's not. Um, he also looks like somebody else. Yeah, so what else is Mr. Shrek? Oh, God. He's in, he's in like all the teen things as angry <laughs> substitute teacher guy who will write his name on the chalkboard and make it squeak. It's James, you know to- Mr. Strickland's James Tolkien, of course. Yeah. You know what, Chewbacca? You're a slacker. You're a slacker. <laughs> You're a slacker. Um, I don't believe he Lovely is the impression. same person that was in Empire that. Strikes Back. No, I don't get us either. We've I've got just... lots of geeks listening to this. So, so, can, can someone tell us who Although the... Now, I mean, now I feel like I've just, you know, I've been... Um, I don't exactly know what kind of... If you'd, it's not exactly racist, but just suggesting that all bald people of that ilk in the 80s look exactly the same. All bald men in 80s films look the same. Yeah. I don't think that's a stretch, Ian. I don't think that's being racist. No. <laughs> What's boldest? Is there, uh, what? I don't know. What I can tell you is Empire Strikes Back. If you type in Empire Strikes Back Cloud City, then one of the auto suggestions is bald guy. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. He's called Lobot. Oh, just... Lobot. They shaved his head and drilled holes into them. Nice. So, um, but it's not Mr. Strickland. By choice or? I mean, a male a human from the planet Bispin who, with the assistance of AJ6 Cyborg Construct, was paid to run battlefield calculations for the Galactic Empire. And then he went to um, be a croupier on Cloud City. That's um, where the money's at. I don't know if we can find... I'm trying to find out who the uh, actor is, though. <laughs> That's like getting a residency in Vegas, moving to Cloud John City. Hollis. <laughs> John Hollis is the actor that plays the bald guy. He's not the same man that plays... Uh, Mr. Strickland. This is a hell of a rabbit hole we're falling down here. We probably skip this now we're losing we've still people. We've done seven minutes of talking about Mr. Strickland. No, so and the bald guy from Cloud City. Can't, anyway, can't fill this well after Scotland I've not, I've, not even, I've not even introduced Johnny in. <laughs> Hello, Johnny. <laughs> Hello. He was late coming on, to be fair. Look, anyway, this is the kind of uh, high quality chat you get week in, week out with this podcast. More of that to come. If you are listening to us, um, you will have found us on one of the podcast platforms, um, numerous uh, that they are, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon, Spotify, anywhere else you can get audio podcasts. We are also broadcasting live at the moment on uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch, and you can watch the podcast back on there as well. If you're our Patreon, go to patreon.com slash Scottish Rugby Podcast, and from £3 a month, uh, you will uh, get not only the main podcast with our adverts, but you'll get a bonus weekly podcast as well that you can watch on a live stream and watch back later. And also um, you get a special audio, the, an audio version of that as well. So this week then, um, we've got some big news. The biggest news of the day, which probably is the most um, excited I think our group chat has been, is that Bruce Springsteen <laughs> is playing uh, Murrayfield next May. <laughs> It's like some of the Venn diagram of my interests. It's, and we're like, yeah. Springsteen at Murrayfield. Ta-da! 
So, um, given we've opened with, with seven minutes of nonsense, what we thought we'd do is come up with some uh, Bruce Springsteen Scottish rugby pod, puns to open with. Johnny, have you got you've got a couple, I think. Yeah, I'll I'll go for my, my twofer, which is uh, obviously a Homer pick, uh, which is Fourth uh, of July, Duffus Park brackets Tandy. Very good. Well, Very double good. for you there. Did Did you have any Ian? Um, yeah, I've got a couple. Um, Rona um, had uh, Born to Rock. Born to Rock's very good. Yeah. yeah. Um, what did I have? Yes. Um, you can look, but you better find touch. Oh, I like that one. one. Yeah. Uh, everybody's got a grace and heart. <laughs> um, and, and one I came up with just a wee while ago, which uh, also invokes Warren Zevon, who uh, I adore. It's a song that uh, Bruce and Warren can try to co-write. So one's called Genie Needs a Shooter and one's called Genie Needs a Shooter. So, you know, Dave Rennie, you know, Rennie Needs a Hooper. <laughs> Excellent. Very, very topical. Uh, Andy Steele saying, will, uh, will Tooney play Bruce out of position and have him as the support act? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Bruce, the Shelly Pipers you... are doing the three-hour set. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. The Chili Pipers are playing the entire Born to Run on bagpipes. <laughs> My mate Stop used to it. be their sound engineer. The Chili Pipers. Yeah. How do you do, how do you sound engineer the Chili Pipers? <laughs> Stand far away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you said that because my answer was going to just be turn everything down. <laughs> I was going to say just like <laughs> having to kind of like show great. Yeah, well, we need yeah. a sound engineer with self significant amounts of self restraint. <laughs> <laughs> one of the funniest people like sort of showbiz celebrities he met um, during his time with them was uh, Lionel Blair, who I've seen a video of. <laughs> Making a very rude hand gesture, <laughs> which was at the Chili Pipers. Um, no, it was uh, in the the the, uh, the pub after the show, and he okay. said he said that Lionel Blair had the most body stories he's ever heard from <laughs> all his years on tour. Them, I can imagine. Uh, my my dad yeah. used to my dad used to do the lights um, at the. Uh, at the Edinburgh, um, the King's Theatre in Edinburgh, and used to, uh, um, Lionel Blair used to lend him his sports car um, to run about town in all those years ago. That was that's years ago when yeah. he was young. I bet, I bet Lionel knew where quite a few bodies were buried. Oh, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> did you have any? Did you have any Bruce Springsteen rugby puns, Craig? Uh, the only one I could come up with was Duhan Bound Train. <laughs> oh, nice! I've I've got some my, minor minor fairly. I've got Streets of Allendelphia. <laughs> That's pretty uh, good work. We were born born in the URC, which is fairly straightforward. Uh, Horn to run. Nice. nice. Johnny Gray ninety nine. Nice Johnny instead of Johnny ninety nine. And uh, this is this is a, this is a stretch for see what works as a uh, highway P Schumann instead of highway patrolman. <laughs> I like it. Do you know? Do you know who had some really good ones? Rory's were brilliant. Yeah, have we got Rory. Have you? Has anyone got the chat? Uh, Rory's yeah, were very the, good. Dancing in the Dark was my favourite. <laughs> yes. Um, Kitty McRae's back in town. Yeah. Oh, darkness uh, on, oh, the, darkness edge on the edge of Townsend. Yeah. <laughs> darkness on the edge of Tooney. That was Tooney. good. Too. Um, uh, the ties that crouch bind and gauge. Yes, I like that as well. That's a very good one. <laughs> So yes. Uh, so needless well, I think, to say, I think there'll be a podcast uh, trip to see Spring, Springsteen in, uh, uh, when he, uh, next year. Already. Yes, I've That's already it, been think... tasked with buying the tickets as Rona will be busy in CT that day. So uh... I think what we'll do is we'll um, we'll record a podcast afterwards, <laughs> <laughs> even if there's rugby on the week, <laughs> week before. It's like, we're just going to talk about what happened at Murrayfield with Bruce. We talked with Bruce's set for two hours. Um, so that's that was that was exciting news. Um, what else were we going to talk about tonight? Um, shall we talk about the rumours of Glasgow's new coach, Craig? Craig, were you pushing your laptop back away from you there in like in a fit of giggles, or was no, so he can get his giant bucket of popcorn out? That's what... <laughs> I'm just going to sit back here and so. Uh, Rob Robertson at the Daily Mail is reporting that John DL, Scotland forwards coach, is in talks to be the new Glasgow Warriors coach on a part-time basis. No, not part-time, sorry, job share basis with his forwards coach role until the end of the World Cup. Johnny, this seems like a supremely bad idea. 
on a number yeah. of levels. Yeah, like on a, I like and that's not to say that John Deal's a bad coach. Mm. Like I like John Deal. I think John Deal's a really good coach and he's a really good forwards coach for Scotland. Um have we looked at some of the front rows that we've got on this tour in Argentina at the moment? Because I think John Deal is gonna be pretty busy till the World Cup. <laughs> like I don't know how much time he's gonna be able to, to commit to Glasgow given the state of the front rows at the moment in the national team. Mm-hmm. Like he's got work to do. Let's let's put it that way. What does I, it always... to ask him to do? I suppose the question is because we've got we've got a scrum coach though. So what does a forwards coach do? Craig. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the forwards coach will deal with your... <clears throat> well, he'll, he'll basically deal with your... Uh, 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 how your forwards are going to play, um, how they're going to move, for, you know, move forward, how you know deals with... You know, depending on how many... Uh, whether you're going to have line-out coaches or whether you're going to coach a line-out yourself, say again with the scrum... Also, with uh, when it comes to the breakdown, um, dealing with breakdown as well as defensive break, uh, attack and defensive scrums, lineouts, breakdown, etc. So, anything to do with forwards, really. Would they do yeah. pods as well, or would that be more a forward scope? That's no, uh, what No, we do. We, that's, no, I, um, that's the that's the comms people that do the podcasts. <laughs> I would. I. I. Well, I, when I, if I if I think of myself as a forward coach, I would be dealing with pods as well. Yeah. What's buzzing who's, with me? Who's buzzing? Yeah, it's really, really annoying, isn't it? It's like someone's. Oh, I think it's maybe my phone. Oh, it's my phone. Sorry. <laughs> it's it's not like someone's my bad. trying to start some ambient music. My bad. Um, phone, is it? Aye. Ian. Uh, <laughs> are you uh, Are you enthused by this? Me, Mark Dodson was promising that. Well, he didn't promise. He said the Glasgow job will attract the best candidates in world rugby. I think, or words to that effect. <laughs> and it turns out it, it's attracted a guy three desks away who probably isn't going to cost an awful lot of money. Well, this was thing like as soon as Danny Wilson was um, put down. He wasn't put center, down, come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was put down repeatedly with pithy remarks. I've got, I've got 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 images now of, um, you, got images now of the farm. I was going to say the Glasgow squad. Where's, where's, where's Danny gone? Oh, we've sent him to the farm. <laughs> He's having a lovely time. There's lots of other coaches there. And he gets a stiff their, um, he gets a stiff their bums and everything. It's great. <laughs> All right, that's enough about Danny Wilson's pumping hands. Um, <laughs> oh, but as soon as it was, you know, announced that he was gone, uh, John DL was the, the first choice. If it was going to be like an in-house appointment, I said it will be John DL. Uh, but then. What's in? Then we got the talk of, oh, we're scouring far and wide for the very, very best. It's like, oh, but you're just going with the, like you said, the guy three doors in. Um, if they just said from the outset, you know, we probably we will promote him because, I mean, they've pushed Pete Horn up pretty quick through the rankings, so I don't think anyone would have a complaint. But because they've made this promise of scouring the globe for the best, um. To then, shot a few weeks later, be like, I mean, this, of course, this is only Rob's uh, info. We've yet to hear from the SEO themselves. Yeah, no, rumors, rumors are just rumors. I mean, I'm not saying. I think that... I've. I mean, I've got this is mad tinfoil hat territory, but interestingly enough, um, Stuart Lancaster has been linked two days ago, two days before that announcement. Stuart Lancaster was linked to Racing ninety two. And then all of a sudden we get Rob being linked, you know, leaked with with the probably going with John DL. Now it might not be Lancaster, but it does. We, we've we've seen it from the SIU before, and it happened to the SIU before. All it takes is someone's agent. I mean, it might be Stuart Lancaster. It could be another coach's agent. You know, just leaking stories or stonewalling the SIU about a deal, and then the SIU go right. Well, we'll leak a story and say we're thinking about somebody else, and that might. On the head, or make them think more seriously about our offer. Now it could be it could be Lancaster. His agents are saying kind of thought eyes at racing ninety two to make um, the SIU try to up the money, and the SIU are just playing hardball, going, "Oh well, if you're not interested for the money we're offering, we'll just promote John here and give him the job." I think they'll be part of that. I think um, you know, but you know, Prendergast has left 
grass singing is is, is yeah. to go to go back to Munster. So there is a fairly high level position for Lancaster, but does Lancaster so want how, to be... Does he want to commute to Paris though from from well, from, I think, from Lancashire? He's, I he's, he's a struggle. He was a struggle enough to get him to go to London, get the England squad down to London. He insisted on <laughs> training in Leeds the entire time he was there, just so he didn't have to travel for. I think the other th- the other side of things um, is the fact that um, does he want another um, coach's job or does he want to come and actually be a DOR and, and, and run the team, you know? So, but even if it is Glasgow, but you know, we'll wait and see. Mm. So, what are we going to see in? Even if it is Glasgow, what's that mean? That's right. <laughs> I was being bitchy. I'm allowed to be bitchy. I've just I've been with Johnny. I've, been, I've, been, I've been with Johnny for the last four well, hours, so I was just in the rubbish, rubbish, rubbish. Nineteen minutes and thirty-one seconds. Need to go back and correct that. Thank you, Johnny. Well, he, had, um, he, had, he had to ask, didn't he? Like, there's only one way. Couldn't have waited for the Patreon pod where the lot swear could you? And I had to poke the bear. <laughs> I, I didn't say it. It was. I know it was him that said it, but. It's not like you didn't know that was going to be the reaction. It's like dealing with kids. It's like dealing with kids when my kids are fighting. Do you know, it's like you know the one that's punched is is in the most trouble, but the one that continually prodded the one that eventually snapped is is, is in a fair amount of bother as well. Continually prodded. <laughs> and and I just sit there, got a short temper. Jeez. And I just sit in the background smiling. That's it. I know. Only because John's not here this week, Craig. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, right. So um, the other kind of. The thing I wanted to talk about, um, and I was going to make this my hands in rough, but I thought I might as well cover it while we're here, is the under-20s. And there's a lot of people um, getting very, very panicked, Craig, about the fact that the under-20s have had a poor run of things. And apparently this is now going to be... Um, you know, Scotland are now destined for successive wooden spoons because our under-20s are getting spanked. Now, I seem to remember that... Uh, maybe I say from a couple of seasons ago, but generally our under twenties have never they've got had the odd result. Mm. But I don't think the performance of the under twenties is necessarily indicative of the future performance of Scotland teams because it's not you know you don't just pick up the entire under twenty squad and then plonk it in your Six Nations squad the next yeah, year. It's a it's a continual Aaron thing. Italy under twenty is really good. Yeah, and they, they, they've always so been like... good though. Yeah, so it's clearly not a signifier of what's going to happen to the senior team. Well, it's it's difficult because, I, and and that's the, that's the question we you have to really ask, don't you, Johnny? It's 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 because if you look at, for example, Garbisi's come through, um, uh, who's the, the young lad that scored a try against um, Wales to 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 win. Um, or did he set the guy up? Yeah, up. Kind of yeah. Player, right? You know, they have a youth system that's starting to get into gear now. I think in Italy, Capuzzo. Sorry, Capuzzo. That's the guy. Yeah. Um, we've ne- we've never. There's. I, I don't remember, and I'll, I'm sure I'll be corrected online. Um, but I've never really seen us. We've never really had a, an absolutely storming under twenty squad. Um, they all seem to develop once they get into senior rugby. Um, and that's where our gems come out of. But also the seven circuit seems to develop them more than the than the under twenty. Because George Horn played under twenties and and he was seen and he was liked, but then when he went to sevens it was that that's really where he developed and became the player that he is. So it's it's a difficult one. I know that Kenny Murray has come out and said that uh, that that's needing top down review of the under twenties section um, or the youth um, pathways. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what he's got to say about it. I suppose the thing is then, Johnny, that if like like Craig said, if, if the development comes on for Scottish players when they enter senior rugby, maybe the difference is that a lot of the other under twenties are already playing senior rugby. If you look at the likes of England, maybe they're, they're, they're more exposed to that earlier than Scotland do. And, and we said last week, it's not necessarily a good or a bad thing because there's an argument to say you don't want to introduce people too early to those to the rigours of it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that the other countries definitely do rush people through a lot earlier. Like, I don't think Lewis Rees-Samet, for example, would be in the Scotland senior team at 18 like he was in Wales. And then there's also an element of, like, I know we joke about it and stuff, but 
a lot of the players in the Scotland senior team didn't come through the Scotland system. Mm. Like we've we've got a really good expat program and a really good program for going out and discovering talent who are Scots qualified in other parts of the world. We we don't rely as much on our under twenties as much as someone like Italy does. Because we'd yeah. be able to go out and go and bring in Scottish qualified talent from other parts of the world. So like it, it's frustrating and it's it's quite upsetting to watch the under twenties get beaten around every week. But I don't think it's a like harbinger of doom for the national team, to be honest. Yeah. I've, Ian, I've, 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 sorry. You'll go ahead. No, well, when you go in, <laughs> God, see, we're all so damn polite around here. Um, yeah, sorry, I had to nip out there. There was a Rona had headphones on. There was a buzz at the door, so I, she couldn't hear it and I had to run it. Um, yeah, I'm. I mean, the thing is, it is a little bit embarrassing. A lot of the times, what the common sort of theme is is that the Scottish under twenties look physically under under prepared. Like you know, like who's doing their S and C. Um, and they seem to get bulldozed quite a lot. Well, like Johnny also said, is that he can't always class under twenties as a, a sort of guide to who's going to progress onto greatness. Because we've all seen people who are great sportsmen at juniors or at, you know at amateur level who haven't been able to progress onto a professional. Um, but you know, you will get there should be some shining lights coming through from there. And most of them seem to be coming from uh, down south rather than coming through uh, Scottish club pathways. Well, my, my point I was going to make um, was you, you also have to look at the fact that, and, and you can probably hit me back with Italy years, but um, if you look at England, for example, um, each club has their own um, uh, academy. And they're being into, the the boys in the academy are being introduced to senior level rugby. Very, you know, you get Henry Arundel and uh, um, uh, which I think some of the other players, the younger players that are coming through, that you know they they're being introduced into senior hard senior level rugby earlier. Um, and if you look at our Super Six, for example. You know, you're not seeing a huge amount of the under twenty squad playing in Super Six. There are a few, but for example, Ka- uh, Callum Norrie, who um, has come through the system through Howe and then gone to Strath Allen, and then um, he's he's now he was playing for Stirling. He came on a couple of times. I think he started, um, uh, started in one of the games, yeah. and then all of a sudden, I mean, against for Stirling. All oh, right, okay. All oh, right. Um, and then was hooked at. 30 minutes or 20 minutes um and so it's it's they're not and as we know with props and we've talked to you know if I, we're, we're going to talk about you know obviously i'm going to talk about props but if you look at for example xander fagerson he needed a lot of time to get to the level he's at and unfortunately because we needed a, a tight head prop and he was very he was he, he he was showing himself to be a very very good tight head prop he was brought into the team a lot quicker than than, than a lot of a lot of teams would bring in a a, a, a prop at that age, so it's it's. I don't know if I, I don't know if they're getting the the senior level rugby as much as we would probably like them to. Yeah, there's a question here on um on on Twitch. We've got a Nemesis sixty nine says, "Do you not think if you're good enough, you're old enough to play at senior level?" I think we've made that point in the past. I think the question is whether or not they're well, ready for so. senior rugby. I mean, what Craig was saying about I means Andrew Ferguson was kind of fast tracked, and because we were so short at tight head, but he was interested. At the yeah, beginning, it, I thought he I, was he was holding his own. Like I remember yeah. his, his debut Six Nations game. Even Paul Connell, I think it was Paul Connell's first uh, first co commentary job just after he'd sort of announced his retirement, and it was against Ireland. He said that like, he was like, actually the penalty should have gone to Scotland because Ireland were angling in once he got a view of Spider Cam. Mm. Um, so maybe that exposure. I think that exposure to high level has helped. Obviously, one of the problems with Scotland is that we only have the two uh, pro teams. So, getting decent exposure to, as Craig said, you know, sort of top level uh, club level of senior rugby um, can be difficult. Uh, and speaking of which, uh, 
yesterday we saw Jamie Dolby is going to be playing at Bay of Plenty in New Zealand, which I think was a an interesting move. It will certainly, well, I think, I think the only other player we've had off them is Hugh Blake. Um, but but oh no, um, Cole did, Forbes, did, Cole Forbes uh, came from Bay of Plenty actually. And so. didn't um, didn't Finn go and spend a bit of time out there on the John McPhail scholarship as well? Yeah. Was it them or Forbes? Not Taranaki. Taran. Yeah. No. Was it Taranaki? I can't remember. We'd yeah. have to look it up. The, the other thing as well about like about playing at senior level, you know, is like Ian just touched on the conditioning and and the size of the players and stuff. And I will come back to Callum again because he is the one, he's, you know he's the one that me and Craig know because we play with his dad, so we've known him since he was dead, dead we. And he came on in the under twenty six nations. And I didn't recognise him when he came on because he went away to Strathallan when he was 17. Mm. Uh, and it's a completely different shape now to, to what he was like when he left. So when you when you start bringing players into senior rugby at like 18, 19, a lot of them have still got a lot of physical development to do. So you might be good, but you might find yourself playing a position that you're maybe not physically prepared for because you're still in the process of develop it into your body shape so you've, yeah. you've got you've kind of got to factor that in as well like i would never in a million years when when callum left how would i have thought he was going to be a tight head and that's where he's playing now for scotland in the, the 20s because he has a totally different shape now at 19 to what he was when he left yeah yeah i would i, I that that's that johnny's buying on with that um you know callum well, I know we're talking about Callum, and we're not trying to pick on him or stuff, you know, because he's he's a really really good lad, and and, and we know the family, and, and 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 all like the family a great deal. He just, he, we would have thought he was going to be a second rower or a back rower. He was a he was a tall lad, very very fit, very very strong. Rode, he, he crewed with uh, with row, you know, he he rode a lot, and he was really really. That was what who what. What we expected, and all of a sudden, I, I was exactly the same as Johnny when he came on uh, for under twenties. What Callum's on, <laughs> and uh, and he just it was a different shape. Um, so it, I don't know whether it's it's they're picking these big fit lads. I think we talked about this the last time. They're picking these big fit lads to go right. Well, we're going to we're going to put them into, into um, programs with um, private schools so that they. They, you know, we'll get the you know they're going to the gym five five six days a week, and they and and they're going to build them into these monsters. But I don't think I I, I personally am I'm unsure whether the academies for Glasgow and for Edinburgh are exposing these players to enough senior level rugby, hard, nasty senior level rugby um, that we we all used to play. See, seeing as we had this link up with uh, was it Stad Nisoir in D2, yeah. yeah, why don't we send all our boys over for a season of D2? <laughs> 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 yeah. go, go, and send, go and send the young lads out to scrum against some 40 year old gnarled Georgian, <laughs> yeah, they might, they might lose an eye or something, but they'll be fine. Um, but that's the thing, about, Michael Bisping know, won a UFC championship with one eye, they'll be fine, yeah. yeah. I, I, I could, I could, you know, I know it's not going to happen because. It doesn't happen anymore because of health and safety and things like that. But I learned all my scrummaging work when I was an under eighteen, uh, going into senior. We we trained with the senior men, and we would sit and we'd, we'd scrummage together. Now I know it can't happen, and I'm not harking back. Oh, it was better in the older days. It wasn't. But it, like for example, my son is doing pre season at the moment with the senior men, and he's 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 been with them now for for two weeks there's no contact it's all just fitness but just being able to talk and spend time with them and re and look at the size that they, that they are and and think right well you know i need to work with i need to work on this i need to work on that it has developed them for two weeks automatically and, and it's not that it's you know and and you know it's the it's just it seems to be that when they go into the these academies they get put in a bubble and, I don't yeah. know if it's and there's a difference, isn't it? Because there is a difference. And my, my brother, I've talked to my brother about it before when he went from you know playing hooker at Colts level to going and playing for Berwick firsts. And he, you know, he'd say the same. You know, it's you, you're going from playing against lads the same age and same size as you. And, and to a certain extent, if you if you if you're good at that level or even excel at that level, there's 
there's nothing to fear because you're going up against someone your own age, your own, mostly your own size. I always remember my brother going in, I can't remember who it was. He was up against, it was a former Scotland international hooker. And my brother said he kept going, my brother kept winning against the head. And the guy said, if you do that again, I'm going to do you the next scrum. So my brother did it again and got to do it at the next scrum. But he said, that's, <laughs> you know, that's the kind of stuff that you have to go through. You have to kind of be able to stand, not be intimidated going in up against a, you know, as an 18 year old prop like Xander Fagerson, for example, going in and scrummaging in his first scrum up against an England front row where, you know, of whoever it would have been at the time, like probably Dylan Hartley might have been up against, you know, and, and the likes of that, you know, old guys have been around the block and that's that's not the same as playing somebody your same age so yeah. i don't know I, and I don't yeah know I, like i used to hate playing against those adlers old boys in them because you know for a fact that they know every single trick in the book and you're going to get to see the whole array of it by the end of the game and you like you cannot you're right you can't prepare yourself for that at age grade yeah well we don't know what the answer is. More, more rugby somehow, but against, I don't know, a, 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 maybe a, a B league, a, a, a URC B league. Oh, hang on, what's Probably the point? The of, well, if we're punting all that money, you old glory, why not send them over for some MLR as well? Can we not get, get them in this funny curry cup with uh, the Irish B teams? Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of Jamie Doby, by the way, uh, Prime SRU slash Glasgow comms behaviour to announce that he's got to play for, for Bay of Plenty 24 hours after he was on Bay of Plenty's Instagram page. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a time difference, surely. <laughs> <laughs> we'll coordinate. Someone's just mis- mis- misunderstood the time difference. We'll coordinate our uh, announcement at the same time. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, so this is for tomorrow. All right, yeah, no problem. That's fine. <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow at nine, yeah, and nobody's gone. G is that BST or New Zealand time? <laughs> um, okay. Uh, should we talk about the Argentina game then? Well, I suppose we should. Yeah. Um, I don't. That scoreline. I, I was watching the highlights again tonight just to kind of remind myself of what happened, and I kind of um, I forget, but I kind of look at wow, that scoreline flattered Scotland quite a lot. I know Argentina were pretty poor, but it didn't feel, and even on rewatch, it didn't feel like we were that good, Johnny. No. What we did do, though, is took every chance they got given to us, mm-hmm. which is not something that Scotland always do. So we probably didn't play well enough for 80 minutes to merit that score line, but every time we had an opportunity to score, we took it. So, um, you know, we can't be too mad at that because traditionally Scotland don't don't always do that. So it was, yeah. it was nice to see it happen for once. What what was the difference for you then, Craig, between last week and this week? Um, I think I think we I think our forwards were um, stronger, more confident. Um, I think. Uh, Hamish and uh, Darge, Rory Darge, were very strong. Gave the rest of the forwards confidence. I like um, the fact that Jamie Lyle has called them the Jackal Brothers. The Jackal yeah, Brothers, yeah. I like to me, to you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. That nearly deserved an atting and uh, a round of applause tweets. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think. I, I think it's. I think, they, they they seem stronger um at the set piece um and i think uh, i think the the sort of the rustiness or the or the lack of effort kind of was shaken off they, they didn't start well um and uh, and then when you know come half time i think i think they kind of realized actually we're going to get beaten here again if we don't get racked together um i am concerned um about Blair Kinghorn and it's the first time I've really watched and maybe taken my Kinghorn shaded glasses off and gone is is he he does I really don't think he suits Tooney's game plan um at 10 and I'm concerned about it um so I think 
when we when we started bringing in the the crash ball, I think we obviously identified a, a weakness in the ten twelve channel um, for for uh, for Argentina. So we started throwing these crash balls, um, and it, and it seemed to work. Um, so yeah, it was. Uh, I think that was the main difference. I think also you know give him give him his due when Ross Thompson came on, um, he turned into a more um, fin, because we went to a more Finn Russell and um, Adam Hastings style 10 where we weren't putting these sort of backdoor passes out that, that, that were being dropped etc or missed he, he went back to his sort of the, the same sort of style as um, as Finn and as, as Adam Hastings would play it seemed to click again and that's where he seemed to sit, suit the, the Tooney game plan a little bit better than, than Blair did yeah, Ian, even you've not been here for the last few weeks and we've kind of gone over the Blair Kinghorn thing. It feels like a little bit to death, but Gregor Townsend has forced us once again to talk about it. And crazy alluded to it there, and it is, it, it does seem, and I think what the conclusion we came to last week is that Gregor Townsend obviously likes Blair Kinghorn as a 10, but isn't prepared to change Scotland's game plan or the way Scotland play to suit the way that Blair Kinghorn can play. Yeah, Kinghorn certainly like one thing with Kinghorn is we know he's such a good runner that he can keep defences on their toes as he's playing flat. What we end up seeing a lot of the time, and I, like you said, you know, I've not been on for a while, but I mean, what I see time and time again is people outside them either overrunning or he's like throwing it behind them. There, there seems to be a lot of a lack of cohesion between him and Sam Johnson. Um, and whether that's... I mean, I, I don't really view Sam Johnson as a crash ball runner, although some people do. I think he's got okay. a more... I think he's got a more rounded game than that. Um, I think he's maybe been asked to do that. Mm. Uh, but... Well, actually, it, it re, re, opens up a whole other thing of um, range of possibilities about midfield because we look at how good Mark Bennett's been playing. Uh Previously, Chris Harris would be undroppable, but no, no, he's a Tory. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm yeah. glad you said it. I'm not he even a brought, successful but, Tory either. Uh, uh, yeah, out in the group stages, Tory. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he didn't know, even make out the repechage. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that when people, Johnson and Harris, they are quite. They're not the most. They're not the paciest. They're not going to cut lines and burst through pace. I mean, obviously, Johnson's done that with his try, but that's because it was quite a short-range one. Um, so now I'm starting to think, like, Bennett has been playing so well at 13. And I love Mark Bennett. And I quite like to see him in that jersey. Is it time to mix it up? Could, could Harris even go in at 12? Because I think, uh, like, one of the squad selections for this weekend, see only two pull or two at 12. I'm fed up of seeing this being attempted because, all right, fine, he's a crash ball. So he can do a crash ball, but he isn't as good a defender as Sam Johnson. Harris is, it, Harris is the best defender, though. That's why he plays 13. He's kind of wasted at 12. The thing is, if you're going to get people, like, Harris doesn't miss tackles. So if you're going to get people running down that channel, He's good at that part. And also it means he can organise more from 12. He's a central man. Bennett's, Bennett's pretty good in defence. Actually, he doesn't get yeah. all, as much credit he's as, as he should. Because he's, he, he's quick and he can move fast and he gets back in position. Um, but yeah, it, it's more that this... I, I don't like this 2 a plot 2 at 12 thing that's going on. Because when he was signed no. by the Warriors, it was like, oh, he's an outside centre and winger. And I don't believe he's played for Glasgow even once at 12. Maybe he has, like, just as a squad rotation thing. Um, but he's, he's, I'm sure he's played more for Scotland at 12 than he has for Glasgow. Yeah, he's played more at 12, I think, than 13 for Scotland. Yeah, and, and, I, and I don't understand that. When you've got Johnson, who has been played consistently at 12, and is a 12, and then you chuck him out, for someone who isn't a twelve, and he's he's done this repeatedly. Pe uh, people always forget that, like, bar the 
Calcutta Cup game in at Twickenham where Cam Redpath played 12, in the last sort of four or five years, <clears throat> every really, really, really good Scotland performance, Sam Johnson's been at 12. So why yeah. are we mucking about with all these well, other ideas? The thing, is, the thing is, though, that, yeah, I totally understand what you're saying there, Johnny, and I, and I accept what you're saying. But that's when you've got someone like Hastings and you've got someone like Finn Russell who throw fat, flat, fat, uh, flat passes, kick over, kick over the over the game line. Um, you don't see the ball being brought to the second attack line behind the ten very regularly with Finn Russell or with 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 um, Hastings. So Sam Johnson plays incredibly well from that. And this is where this is where I get a bit frustrated with the whole Blair Kinghorn thing. Blair Kinghorn doesn't play that way, and he never has. And he's a runner. He's a ten. He's a runner. Now, whether whether that is whether we're wrong in playing him at ten, I'll give you your your chance to talk about that. And I, I know that you all well. I know that you and John absolutely don't believe that he's a ten for Scotland. But where he, he has worked incredibly well with Edinburgh is having a second distributor outside him. And and whether, because I know Ian disagrees with me, but I don't think Sam Johnson's a second distributor. I think he's a someone to deal with a flat pass or someone to run onto a kick over overhead. He's a good defender. And so where if he, if and, and where I'm confused with Tooney is the fact that I thought when he put when he named Hutchison in the team, I thought he's coming in at twelve, and that's going to be a nightmare for Argentina because you're going to have Blair Kinghorn attacking the soft shoulders, putting passes out the back, and you've got a second distributor there with Hutchie, and it, it, he didn't put him there, and that's what it's, threw yeah, me. Just out of interest, like who's who's played most? Who played most for Edinburgh at, at twelve last season? Because I mean, I wouldn't like Christine, who I'm a, quite a big fan of, uh, incidentally. I don't really see him as a distributor. Uh, did Lang play quite a lot at 12? Oh. Lang played a lot, and then Christine came yeah. in when, when Lang was um, was injured. But also, if you if you look at Christine playing underneath, under Mike Blair, he is a distributor. He's no longer... Well, he cause he was a lovely offload against Glasgow, didn't he? Yeah, and that's that's where I've... I've and that's where I always used to call Christine out. I... I why is he playing? He's all he never passes the ball, but that was under Cockrell, and he's on, under under Blair. He is starting to distribute a lot more because there's a lot of times at Ember that Blair Kinghorn's come in at second receiver as well. Like they stick twelve Lang or they yeah. stick Lang outside a nine, and then Kinghorn's run onto it. Yeah, and that's and not it, he, that's not the job he's been given at Scotland. And I think when you know, I know Johnny, you were saying about you know the England game with Cam Redpath. I think the problem that Townsend has is he's wanted to play the second distributor at 12 in the past but his second distributor at 12 has always then got horrendously injured like within one match whoever he's picked but it seems like utter madness then and the opportunity you get to try it again to just say well I'll, I'll stick with these bits of what's working and then just hammer in some other random bits and see if they work rather than trying to Rather than trying to start again, almost say, okay, we've got Black King Horns coming. He's playing really well at Edinburgh. What what would work? What, how how can we make fit a game plan around him if, say, Finn Russell or Adam Hastings are going to get injured? And it's just, well, we'll just throw him in with our current systems and just see what happens, I guess. And then at the moment he switched to fullback, which I don't, you know, it can't be a coincidence that Ross Thompson, like you, you say, Craig, Ross Thompson comes on. Is a better fit for the game plan. Blacking on slots very nicely in at fifteen, makes a wonderful cover and tackle, and Scotland play better rugby because Johnny, everyone's playing in position. Yeah, like that, and because me and Craig have had this exact conversation, we had it earlier today, and I was saying to him that I don't think that as much of it is the fact that Ross Thompson was on, as some people are saying. You know, people are like, oh, see, Ross Thompson came on and all of a sudden the attack got better. It's like, yeah, but that it wasn't because Ross Thompson was on. It's because Ross Thompson is a 10 and was playing at 10 and Blair Kinghorn's a brilliant 
fullback, I was playing at fullback, and suddenly everyone was in position. Like I think a lot of what made Scotland's attack better was Blair Kinghorn attacking from fifteen, because he had he cut some absolutely fantastic lines. He linked up with the rest of the rest of the backline really well. Ross Thompson put him away a couple of times. It was just a it was a team where I think they all looked a bit more confident. They all looked a bit more comfortable. And they like they were attacking better. There's no getting away from it. When when Thompson came on and Kinghorn went to 15, the attack did get a bit more fluent and it did get a bit better. But I don't think it was because Ross Thompson was on. I think I think Kinghorn playing 15 probably had as much to do with it as Ross Thompson did. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about the forwards. I think one of the kind of big takeaways for me this weekend, Craig, was, and you've touched on it already, is that when Scotland play with two open sides, and I include Jamie Ritchie in that because I know he's a kind of seen as a six and a half sometimes, but he's you know he's he's one of the, the best fetchers in the Northern Hemisphere right now. When Scotland play with two open sides rather than one open side and one kind of blind side or a lock, everything's so much better. Did we disrupt the opposition attack better? We defend better, and it just seems again I don't understand why we've at times reverted back to you know sick and Sam, Sam Skinner at six because we're up against France for example rather than playing our own game because when we've played our own game this weekend and not really worried about the physicality of it and just stuck dodging the mission at every rocket's paid dividends where, where we where Scotland are best and where I I feel Scotland are best and and is when we are set up Going down the route of Tunis' fastest, most skillful team in the world, sort of when he when he came out and said we want to be play the fastest rugby in the world. When our forwards are going down that that route, and we've got two two sevens really playing both sides of the of, of the field, I think it's 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 teetered. At points where we've been thinking, actually, it's not working as well. But that was when, dare I say it, we had a lighter weight eight. But Matt Fagerson has really come on, and really and and really has has made the position his. Um, he's he's incredibly strong over. He's he, he, you know he's built up. I don't think he's he's been perfect for for some time, but I think he's he has he has really. Worked into that into that situation where now he it's his jersey and someone has to take it off him, um, and and I totally agree. I th- don't get me wrong, Sam Skinner's come to Edinburgh and I'm looking forward to seeing him play. But when he plays at six, I don't. I, and we and we and we played a bit about with um what's his name? He's he's injured. Uh, he's an Edinburgh player. God, it's gone right in my head. Um, the ballet Nick Heenan. Um. <laughs> yeah, the valid answer. Um, uh, when 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 he was playing at eight or at six, Scotland just didn't seem to be right uh, in the forwards. Um, you know, we've got an incredibly strong and mobile front front row, um, a mobile um, uh, tight five altogether, but an incredibly mobile back row. And I, th- I think I think that's where we play our best rugby, and that's where it seemed to click on the weekend. Yeah, Johnny, you agree with that? Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. My, my only slight counterpoint to it would be that when Andy Christie came on, he was incredible, and and he doesn't go after the ball very much. But what he did do was some ridiculous chop tackles. Like he was round mm-hmm. people's ankles every single time. And like, and if it was anybody within about sort of two passes from the ruck. Somehow Andy Christie was there every single time, and he was like right around their angles, take them down, and there was somebody over the ball straight away. Um, That's a Saracen thing, that it really is. They yeah, do a lot of that. He, yeah, he was really good, and but he he kind of had almost no interest in going after the ball. Really, all he did was like chop people down, get back up, chop down the next person. Yeah, but it worked when he was on. It, you, you didn't really notice a drop off. Yeah, there's one was about I think an Argentine attack when they were about five meters from the line and only six minutes from the end. You can hear Reynal saying, "No, no, his arm went in first because he has just mm. leapt off the line and just smashed some of the shins." Yeah, uh, yeah, he's looked very impressive. Yeah, um, I, I struggle to to work out who, 
if if everyone's fit, who goes in the back row now? Because I think you've got Jamie Ritchie still to come back in. Well, I think Dodge drops. I think you'd have Mish Ritchie and Ferguson. I thought Matt Ferguson was immense at the weekend. Yes. Oh, he was great. Yeah, yeah. but then, but yeah. then, does Dodge go on the bench or does Christie go on the bench? Dodge. You're going to play Dodge. Probably Dodge. Dodge. Yeah. But you have I, I honestly don't Christy. think I could leave Christie out of the team. Com- completely. Could like if he could defend like that consistently. I, I don't know if I could leave him out, especially if, if we're winning a game, he's the person you want to come on. Yeah, but then you have to, you know, it's swings. You have to take all the conditions into account, don't you? And you look at Matt Ferguson. Matt Ferguson, I, I remember when Craig was talking earlier about, you know, body shapes and uh, people falling out. When Matt Ferguson made his debut, Craig or Townsend was still like, we're not sure because he's still only 17, 18. We're not sure exactly if he's going to have a growth spurt and be a definite number mm-hmm. eight or if he's going to be a seven. Um, but the thing is, he, he's good at chop tackle as well. And it, he... God, the last thing, like, Rich, like, he can't ever leave Hamish Watson. We've seen Tony do it and been appalled. Yeah. I mean, Hamish Watson came in on Saturday and, no surprise, surprise, wins man of the match. You know, yeah, as he as he. But the thing is, you, you can't. This is a Richie tackle, either. which was appalling. Richie is like my first name on the team sheet. Yeah, for for a lot of reasons, I think Richie is Scotland's most important player. Yeah. Um, but then you've got this amazing talent, Rory Darge, Fagerson, like Craig was saying. I think he has now cemented number eight for all the. No, but he's not big enough. Crowd. I think he's proved he's maybe he's not tall enough for you, but he'd tell you what he's bloody tough enough. Uh, I think the chance. I think the chances are that you you. It's going to be rare that you will have Richie Watson and Ferguson all fit at the same time. Mm. So I don't think it's that often that you're going to be faced with a the Dodge Christie dilemma. If I'm honest, Johnny, yeah. there'll be enough opportunity for the, for them both to slip in and out. You, you, and it's enough also, that, that it's enough that we've got somebody else of that caliber who can come in, and that's quite you also, exciting. You also have to remember that um, you. Uh, I, I might be wrong in this, but this will probably be Missy's last World Cup. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whereas Rory will will go on the World Cup tour. He'll he'll go to the World Cup and he'll get experience of the World Cup, and then you'll probably see the handover slowly off. He'll get more and more game time and you'll see him coming in. Yeah, but we can't allow sentimentality to take over quality. That's the, that's oh, it. yeah, don't get me wrong. Listen, I, 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 the, if you said to me that, that you know, Mish was, you know, I, I didn't think Mish should go. should have gone on to Argentina because I, I thought he should have been left at home because, he, because his performance this year was showing as if he's incredibly tired and he's 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 needing a rest, and I was really surprised for him to go. So uh, I, you know, so so for him to come out and put a man in the match performance and was very very good and uh, it opened my eyes. But it, I certainly, you know, it's difficult. I'm excited about Hamish Watson being captain. Yes, I was just yeah. about to say that, yeah. and because... I was watching the there was the interview with Gregor Townsend. Um, after the squad was announced on on the SRU YouTube channel, saying, you know, he's he's not been captain before, but he stepped up on this tour as a leader. Mm. And when you see, I mean, even like him getting his fiftieth cap. I mean, oh, you know, Gilchrist got me in the feels when he was blubbing about the fact that he was getting <laughs> Mish's fiftieth cap. But then he's just a very he, he's a very clear communicator, Hamish Watson. And he never takes a step backwards. You know, I don't think he's ever had... He's had games where he's not been outstanding for Scotland. I don't think he's ever had... Aside from his debut, where he got yellow carded within five minutes of coming on, I don't think he's, he's never had a bad game for Scotland. Still, no, he's, had, um... he's never He's never had anything below a seven. I don't think he's ever put in anything below a seven out of well, ten. I don't know, has he, Cammy? <laughs> I don't. I'd have to check. I'd have to check the record. <laughs> did he play on that? Yeah, I don't think he did. You know, I don't know. Mm. I would have given. I, I wouldn't have given Mish a seven. 
Oh, shit. I'll, I'll check. I'll check on that while we carry on talking. But Craig, uh, Hamish Watson is captain. Is he? Is he captain member before? No, I don't think so. Uh, not in my in my memory. So um, you know, he's uh, I, I and and you said it if I remember correctly when we talked about him going out to Argentina, and you said you know he's he's been given a chance to come out and just be on tour and be part of the group. And there's a reason for it, and this is this has obviously been Tooney's reason for it. Now, okay, fair enough. I think is Gil just injured, or I've not seen I've not seen anything released to say why he's not in the squad because he's not even in the he's not even on the bench. So he's completely out, um, completely out of the squad. So you know, I don't know whether it's been. Um, but it's been fortune that's favoured Mish, but certainly just as you say, Tooney's come out and said, you know, he's been an, he's been a great leader for all the players that have been out there, all the young lads as well. So I think just as you were saying there, there was a reason for it, and and this is obviously the reason for it. Yeah, it seems strange to me, Johnny, that he hasn't been part of the leadership group before, which is kind of what Townsend was alluding to. That you would have thought Mish would have been right in there. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a weird one, and and whether it's one of these things where like he's not formally part of the leadership group, but everybody knows that like you always just listen to Mish. Because I think like I, Hamish wants to strikes me as, as the kind of person who doesn't have to be in the leadership group to be a leader. If that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Like well, like he's he's maybe not necessarily part of the formal leadership group, but when he speaks, you listen. Type thing. Ian disappeared. I don't understand Hello, what happened. Sorry, there. yes. Um, um, no, uh, I've had my work laptop plugged in um, and I hadn't plugged my own laptop in, so the battery died. Oh, well, there you go. Um, nice to have you back. Uh, I was checking, I was checking out, I was checking out my, I, I hadn't noticed that happened because I had another tab open checking what marks I gave Hamish Watson out of that England game. And uh, I'm upset to say I gave him zero out of 10. Ah. <laughs> my exact words. Now, this is a Lions year. For context, this was a Lions year. So, I said he's managed some yeah. of his trademark runs, but exposed at the breakdown. Back to touring with Scotland in the summer. That's an allusion to not being on the Lions tour. No longer deserving of a nickname, zero out of ten. <laughs> you <laughs> absolute zero, son of a monster! Son of a oh. monster. Oh, that was the year. Man. That's the year we christened him Pinball. You see. Aye, uh, well, uh, but, um, look, what was interesting? Um, if I don't know if you saw the Tony chat on Twitter, or no, you said you saw it on YouTube. I didn't care if it was a different cut. Um, but Tony said that this was the first tour that Watson had been voted in as uh, part, obviously, with Hogg and that way. They were doing votes on leadership group, and Watson got voted in to, as part of the leadership group. Uh, he was apparently the most popular vote. And I think just before I got cut off, um, like I think I heard you were saying, um, I think he has become, uh, he's, he goes in front of the cameras now. I mean, usually he has to do it because he's one man in the match. Um, but, he, you know, uh, he was a, a sort of Vodafone, he had his own like Mish Cam on the Lions Tour uh, after winning the, the player tournament. And like you said, you know, he, he leads by actions. Uh, he's not a big shouter, but when he speaks, you listen. Because he's got to that stage now where, you know, like you said, he's a constantly good performer. He's in the cold face. He gets stuck in. You follow that man into battle. Um, so you just, you know, he doesn't need to be loud. Whatever he says mm. has weight to it. Yeah. Um, look, we've hit the hour mark, and joining us fresh from his tennis, it's John Anderson. Hello, John. Hello, hello, hello. How are we all? Wonderful. John's 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 wearing his headset, but he's using it clearly on his laptop mic. Am I? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you're speaking to us from, from inside a cave, John. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, we're going to wrap it up there. If you, um, for, for the main podcast, while John sorts out his mic and makes it sound like he's... Uh, not in a cave. Um, that's it for the main pod this week. We're not entirely certain whether there will be a main pod this week. There will be uh, next week, sorry. There will be a, a Patreon um, summer tour kind of end of season wrap-up 
next week for definite. We may put, depending if there's any news or any big talking points from the game this weekend, we, we may put out a normal podcast as well. So keep an eye on or the a new Glasgow for coach. That. Or a new Glasgow coach, indeed. <laughs> Um, we may put out a main podcast for that, so watch the channels. There'll definitely be a Patreon um, podcast next week. We're going to go and record our Patreon special now. Um, John's going to have to catch up with some of the running jokes we've we've had for this. Um, I'm about to confuse him by talking about John Hollis. He won't have a clue what we're talking about. Um, for, mo- for the moment, though, it is goodbye from me and goodbye from Craig, Ian, John from his cave, and Johnny. Um, Cheer on it. <laughs>